up, Toasties? I'm Missy, here with my bestie, Johnsy. Hey, Toasties. And we are here with our little beverages. I have, what do you got? What you got over there? I'm staying hydrated. Hydrated? <laughs> I had a long night last night. <laughs> A little too much fun. <laughs> too much fun. It is very important to hydrate, you guys. Yes. Make sure you're always staying hydrated. Yes. So that's so good on you. Mm -hmm. So good on you. I'm staying hydrated, too, with a seltzer. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> a hard seltzer. <laughs> a truly, which I'm truly not a fan of these, actually. Um, but this one's not too shabby. It's a... Uh, that's what's like the fruit juice or something? It's a, yeah, the fruit punch one. I I just... I don't know what it is about it that I'm not a fan of, though. Um, I think it does have sucralose or something in it. That's probably... It has to. I'm, a, I'm trying to... I don't like the sweetener. I hate... It's stevia. I hate artificial sweeteners. Ooh, stevia. I hate... Stevia gives you the poops. Oh, artificial flavor... Artificial sweeteners also just taste... I can't even describe it. They're just, the sweetness level to it is ten times more than regular sweetness. It's very... Artificial. Chemical tasting. Yes. Yeah. Although stevia is not, like, chemical no, it's made. made. It's made yeah. from, a, like, a leaf or something like that. It's, it tastes funny to me. It's not bad, but just, artif like I said, all those artif are those substitute sweeteners or artificial sweeteners just have that, like... Ugh. Not a fan. This isn't too shabby, though, guys. Not too shabby. I would drink it if it was there which it was so and look at me drinking something different because i also have my barefoot moscato sitting in the fridge <laughs> i could have grabbed that <laughs> i will later maybe <laughs> so last week we talked about a very horrific case about joanne tate mm -hmm. and you had mentioned on how like later she mm -hmm. saw a man on the screen on TV that she's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's Melissa actually, did. Mel yeah. yeah. Well, that man was intriguing to me. Who is this man? Why did he not get convicted for that for that crime? All the things. Um, that man's name was Tommy Lynn Sells, who notoriously named himself the Coast to Coast Killer. He gave really? himself that name. No, he did not. Yes. <laughs> that's a narcissistic. Right? Like, who... <laughs> Who names themselves? Oh my god, this dude was, like, he, I already knew he was, like, fucking awful, but... Awful. Just awful. Oh. This man was awful. And you guys are about to learn how awful this man is. When that I, just means that he took, like, actual, like, pride in it, if he had, he, like, named himself. He, yes. That part, when I, re when I read that, I was like, you literally named yourself that? Do the other killers like name themselves like the Golden State Killer? Did he name himself that and no. all that other stuff? Like no, mm -mm. he na he called himself. The I think the only other one would have been the Zodiac. Did he did he name himself the Zodiac? Yeah, because he signed the letters. Oh yeah, he did yeah. sign the letters. That that's right. That's right. That's right. I know things, guys. I promise. Uh, <laughs> but no, he called himself the Coast to Coast Killer because he went coast to coast just killing. Mm. But, like I said, how, how vain and narcissistic are you to give yourself your your own little code name? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So, Tommy Lynn Sells. And I'm not going to call him the Coast to Coast Killer because that's what he wants to be called. And he's a jackass. He was born June 28th, 1964 in Oakland, California. Mm. Yeah. Oh, California. He was one of five children his, to his mother, Nina, who was not married. He was a twin as well to um, his twin sister. It was a boy and a girl. Her name was Tammy Jean. Tammy Jean. Tammy Jean and Tommy Lynn. And they lived in California. And they lived in California. <laughs> it was the 60s. I mean, it was the 60s. Um, supposedly... Tommy's father died when he was 11, so mm. definitely did not grow up with his father. And even still, it didn't seem like his dad was in his life prior to Tommy dying, really. Well, that sucks. When Tommy was 18 months, though, him and his twin sister contracted meningitis, which is pretty freaking insane for, like, a baby to get. 
meningitis. That is a horrific illness. How do they even treat that? In, like, you know, an infant. I didn't even look that up further. I don't know. Yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. I know it can't be because to diagnose it, don't, it's only through a spinal tap. Exactly. You have to give a baby a spinal tap. There's... Right, and I know it affects your spine and your brain. And I mean, I'm not trying to give him any type of like maybe that's why they did what he did type thing. There's other situations that are gonna be talked about here. That's like, well, maybe that's why that happened. Um, there's obviously never an excuse to like do bad things in the world, but like. He At had, some point, you kind of try to want to, like, understand him and try to figure out, like... Why he did what he yeah. did. Yes. And it's like, okay, 18 months meningitis, that messes with your nervous system. That, like, fries your brain. Mm-hmm. So already, things are going south for this for this guy. His sister died. From it? From it. Mm-hmm. She died. He lived. Mm-hmm. He was only 18 months. That's a year and a half, almost. That is a year and a half. I know my math. <laughs> See, guys, I know things. <laughs> It's, this artific- it's at the end of the day. <laughs> it's that artificial sweetener. Yeah. Um, he was at, like, I think five. Or no, shortly after he was, after he recovered from having meningitis, he was sent to go live with his Aunt Bonnie mm-hmm. um, in Holcomb, Missouri. I think you pronounce Holcomb. Holcomb, Missouri. And he lived with her for quite a while until he was about five. Nina came and tried to take him back, or did take him back, because she found out Bonnie was trying to adopt him. So this is, again, one of those moments where it's like, he may have been a good person. Yeah, he could have had a good life. He could have had a good life, because we don't know what his life would have been like had he stayed with his aunt, Bonnie. Obviously, she saw something that needed to happen, and she tried to take action, and it didn't work. Nina came and took him back. Um, so that was at five by seven. He began regularly drinking alcohol. Seven years old. Mm. He became an alcoholic. He was probably a lot of the issue right there. His brain has already been ate up by meningitis. And then he became an alcoholic by seven. He was stealing his alcohol from his grandpa. Mm Mm-hmm. He would get the alcohol from his grandpa's stash and by eight years old... He ended up socializing regularly with a nam- with a man named Willis Clark, who supposedly was molesting him with Nina's consent. Oh my God. Yeah. Nina was okay with the relationship, which Sal says is a big part of his... Um, the cause was she of his dating trauma. This dude or what? No, I don't know. Like where the relationship was with this man and how he came into play. Was she like s- getting something from it or something? She, I have no fucking clue. There are sick people out there like that, oh so my I would not. God. But yeah, he was eight, which is um kind of weird, you know, the because as you guys will hear more, like that was almost his mo in a lot of his crimes. Molesting. Mm. Uh, By 10 years old, he started using narcotics. Which, that there, this is, like, why I'm like, oh my gosh, like, your life is real shit. And maybe there's a reason you became a bad person. No. Because one of the greatest men, uh, Robert Downey Jr., was 9 years old when he started narcotics. I could be incorrect on the age, but I know he was very young. He's so fucking hot. Oh, gosh. I know. That's why I was like, he's one of the greatest men ever. But look at the great things he's doing. Like, yeah, he had a really rough life. He did a lot of yeah, really... he's a really good person now. He's a great person. Like, he turned himself around. Mm-hmm. And he's... I love him. I love that man. And, um, like, he was doing all... He was doing drugs at a young age. Super, super, super young age. He ended up in jail... He won't explain what happened in that. That is the thing he's going to end up taking to his grave because he He has every right to. Exactly. Because he says, like, he does not open up about that time in his life, but shortly after his jail time is when he turned things around. The only thing I do know is Burger King apparently is really what saved his life because he was so high. He ate Burger King. It was disgusting. He got out of his car, dumped all his drugs in the lake or the river or whatever, and just went on about his way. And now we have Robert Downey Jr. as you see him today freaking amazing so 10 years old being a narcotic user is not an excuse to be a psychopath because robert downey jr was and look at him Mm. just throwing that out there 
Um, but yeah, so meningitis, 18 months, being molested as a child, seven-year-old alcoholic, things are just going more and more downhill. Um, he, they, they lived with their, um, grandparents at 13. He entered his grandma's bed naked while she was sleeping. And that eventually Nina kicked him out of the house, banded him from the house. Was he going to do something? It was unclear, but I'm going to assume yes, because what la- the fuck? Yeah, later on you'll, you'll hear, um, Shortly after that situation happened, his mom and siblings just up and ditched town, abandoning abandoning him. Didn't tell him he was leaving. Didn't tell him they were leaving. Nothing. Just gone. I would, too. I wouldn't want him to know where I'm at. (laughs) Which this led him to his first murder a few days later. In a fit of... At 13? Yeah. He was 13. He was in a fit of rage after the situation, so he just shot and assaulted a woman. She did survive. Oh, shit. Mm hmm. So that was 13. By 14, he lived as a nomad permanently. I'm assuming nobody knew it was him when he was 13. I'm guessing. He just kind of got away with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm guessing. He was kind of this, this permanent nomad by the age of 14. And his family ended up abandoning him to Little Rock, Arkansas. And in May of 1981, while he was visiting his mother and family, uh, he tried to get into the shower with his mother naked and molest her. So I'm going to assume at 13 he tried to molest his grandmother. It was very unclear of what happened, but he did attempt to molest his mother in the shower. So that, again, instantly got him kicked out of the house again. So... So he had found them again. He yeah, he eventually found them. Um but he um I'm going to this is where like, you know, he's molested as a child. Molesting yeah. is his thing. Um after that his drinking did increase leading to his first arrest in 1982 for public intoxication. He got arrested um for a lot of petty things, stealing, mm-hmm. public drinking, whatnot like that. Um he was homeless, train hopping, and hitchhiking across the U.S. from 1978 to 1999, committing various crimes. He did have several jobs, from manual labor to a barber, just all sorts of things. They're all very short-term mm-hmm. jobs. Um, I think he like worked in a carnival at one point. Yes, he did work in a carnival, which you'll hear a little bit more about that as well. And during that time, he continued heavy, heavy drinking and drug abuse. And he was in prison several times for all, for some of his petty crimes. Um, and also a little bit more of a severe crime, which again, I'll get into a little bit later. He has quite the diagnosis list. He was diagnosed once he got, you know, arrested in the end. He was diagnosed per- with personality disorders consisting of antisocial borderline and schizoid Mm. yeah as well as substance abuse bipolar disorder major depressive disorder and psychosis damn yeah when he was arrested he he claimed he his murder count was in the 70s but they had about 22 that they can kind of confirm that were him but they'll never know the actual definite number so he's he his number he claims is over 70 people he's murdered so take that with a grain of salt it could be yeah because when he was arrested for the final time they definitely felt like he was playing a system just admitting to murders that he didn't do because he'd also say he did something and then he'd take it back and then he'd say he did something he'd take it back so, some of the confessions and things that he had, some murders, this is a nice, long, fun list to you guys. Um, your discretion is advised. Listen at your own risks, because some of these are pretty, some of them can be pretty intense. So, like I said, age 15, actually 13, he had the person, his, first, his yeah. woman that he shot, um, who lived. At age 15, in Mississippi... 
he broke into a house and discovered a man performing oral on a little boy. Um, oh. Yeah. Which pissed him off. Rightfully so. It instantly threw him back to when he was a child. Yeah. Um, so he killed the man that was doing that in a fit of rage. However, this is one that was not confirmed if he actually did. But I saw a lot of times this one was brought up as his first confirmed murder at the same time. I'm going to say he probably did do that. Okay. Um, and in 1980, he claims he killed a man with an ice pick near a Chinese restaurant in L.A. Again, that's another one that's not confirmed. However, he was um, in the area of the time of that crime as well. So a lot of times oh. he was in the area of the crimes that were committed. Things that he... Cases that he did confess to that they did have a lot of links to him being there. But a lot of these, this is really upsetting. Even though he confessed to a lot of these, even though he, they found a lot of links to him being part of these crimes, Mm -hmm. he was not convicted for them. And that's annoying. What the fuck? Yes. So, buckle up, guys. July 5th, 1979. Um... John Cade, he was 39, killed with a 32 caliber pistol during a home invasion, which I think is the Mississippi man that he broke into the house because this was the one that he actually confessed to and mm-hmm. they had the links because it says Sal was observed um, near the area during the time. So I think that was the Mississippi one that's claimed to not be confirmed, but then later on was kind of confirmed. Like, yeah, gotcha. he did do that one. Because in 1979, that would put him at about 15 years old. That would put him at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Because he was born in... Yeah. Um, In April... April 27th, 1982, that was the Joanne Tate one. That you had talked about that case. And later on, they're like, oh my gosh, she saw him on screen. And was like, no, that's him. The dead cold eyes thing, which... Yeah. But that one was never confirmed. No. Unfortunately... And there's a reason, there is, there's a reason, unfortunately, yeah. as to why it wasn't confirmed, which I'm not going to give spoilers. We'll get to it if you haven't figured it out already. July 31st, 1983 in St. Louis, Missouri, which is around the time on, your story was St. Louis, Missouri as well. Yes. He's in Missouri a lot. You guys will see. Yeah, he's supposed to have family yes. near there. Yes. Which this does talk about that a little bit. Uh, Tiffany Jill. Mm-hmm. She was four. And Colleen Jill, who was 33. They were found in their home. Blunt weapon, battered to death. Both um, were battered. A man matching the description of cells was seen leaving the crime scene, which he resided nearby because he had relatives who lived in St. Louis region. That was unfortunately another one that was not confirmed. But again, he was kind of like in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh... July 26, 1985, Springfield, Missouri. Sells was 21 at the time, and he worked at a carnival. So this is the carnival one, and met a 28-year-old Ina Cord and her son Rory, who was four. Now, according to Sells in his confession of the situation, him and uh, Ina invited him over to their home. Mm-hmm. where they had sex and then they fell asleep and he woke up to her stealing from him in his backpack so he beat her to death with her son's baseball bat Ugh. and then he killed the son because he was afraid he might be a potential witness mm. <clears throat> and their bodies were found three days later later but he had already left town by then in May 1st, 1987, Lockport, New York. And this man gets places fast. Yeah, I he, mean, that's he, like, like jump trains and whatnot. He would jump, like... he would jump <clears throat> trains, he would hitchhike, he would do <clears throat> all the things. Um, was a Suzanne Quartz. Um, I think I'm saying her last name right. C- K-O-R-C-Z. She was 27. She disappeared after leaving a nightclub alone. She wasn't found until September 5th of 1995. Holy shit. At the foot of an embankment near Niagara Falls. Her cause of death was unknown due to decomposition. 
Um, in 2004 is when Siles confessed he killed a woman in that area. His presence in the area at that time was confirmed, and he even identified her in the crime scene. But at the time, he was already sentenced for another crime. So he wasn't prosecuted for that one. So he was able to give a lot of details about that crime. Yeah, just, and they have a lot I'm of links. That's how they found her. Yeah, that's pretty much how they found her because he kind of led them to where she was yeah, at. Yeah, and he to was in just given. Yeah, she was just given a huge, but he was already being prosecuted for another situation, which again we'll get to that later. So this was May, nineteen eighty-seven, October of nineteen, October fifth of nineteen eighty-seven. Hey, that's my anniversary. October 5th. Um, He's all the way in Nevada now. New York to Nevada in that short amount of time. Mm. Uh, Stephanie Kelly's store. She was 21, last seen at a four-way cafe and truck stop in Wells, Nevada. He confessed to killing her, said she was hitchhiking, and he offered her a ride to Reno, Nevada, and that they took LSD, and then he strangled her. Um, in Lovelock, covered her in concrete and dumped her into a hot spring. Unfortunately, her body was never found. What the fuck? They wouldn't go find her body or look for her because of financial reasons, and they didn't think that they would, by this point, even find anything because of how long ago it was. Because, again, this was in, like, 2000s (laughs) that he finally was confessing to this murder. Mm. And that was 87. November 17th, 1987. It was a month, and he's already now in Illinois. And he confessed to the murdering of a family of four, the Dardine family. This one is really... Don't pick up hitchhikers, people. Please. He was hitchhiking. Where Keith Dardine, who was 29, picked him up and brought him to the house for dinner. What? I got freaked out one time. I never will forget it. My dad, we're going down that old Bonaire trail and what trail mm. and whatnot, and he sees a nun walking, and he stops and gives this nun a ride, and I'm in the back seat freaking out. Daddy, don't pick her up, please. Your dad's a luckily, good, your dad's a good Christian man. He is, <laughs> but why. luckily we were a okay. But ugh. Yeah, I don't I was going to shit myself the entire don't time. Don't pick up hitchhikers. One thing I've learned is, like, adults are capable. Especially nowadays. Mm-hmm. I don't even care that this was the 80s, though. Like, late 80s. Like, adults are capable. We are capable. We have the means to figure shit out. Mm-hmm. There's no need to help them. And that may be, like, horribly selfish of me. I don't care. I just don't trust nobody. I just don't want to get murked. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, to the Dardine family, that is exactly what happened. When they pulled up to the house... Sells pulled out a gun and shot Keith twice in the head and then emasculated him, which if you guys don't know what that means, he cut his penis off and then shot him once more in the head. Peter, his son, who was three, was bludgeoned and Elaine, his wife, who was 30, who was pregnant, Mm. was attacked and bludgeoned to death as well. And during the attack as she died, she delivered a baby post-mortem. Oh which is God. the fourth victim, whose name would have been Casey, and he bludgeoned Casey, and then went to mutilate Elaine's breasts and sexually assaulted her corpse with the baseball bat that was used to murder her children, which was left protruding oh. out of her vagina when he left the house. Like, that that's, one... I think that's the one I've heard of before because they kept comparing it to Joanne's. Yes, and that one... Hmm. There's more that's kind of like Joanne's. There's there's that's there's more. That's awful. And that's that's way awful. And there's more to that one later as well. Um So that one's like his most brutal one. I mean all of them are brutal, brutal. but that yeah, one that was like you just beat a newborn baby. Yeah, she delivered a baby, he bludgeoned that to death and then, but then he mutilated them. The the husband and wife. After they just did, like, a nice thing, and they were about to fucking feed him. Right. That's what I said. Don't pitch uh, up the hitchhikers, guys. So awful. Sometimes kindness gets you nowhere. Still be kind. Just don't pick up hitchhikers. December 18th, 1988. Tucson, Arizona. Kent Allen Lawton. He's 51. 
was stabbed and buried in a shallow grave near a homeless camp. Sells claims he killed him because he refused to pay for drugs. His body was found two days later. Now, I don't know who refused to pay for the drugs. Like, I'm going to assume Sells decided he wasn't going to pay for the drugs. He was just going to take the drugs and kill the man. Yeah, that's the way I took it. That's the way mm. I took it. Um, there was also later speculation that the reason he, he thought it, he was also, a, like, a trans, a woman, mm. and later found out it was a man. I don't know, don't care. You still killed somebody, you asshole. December 9th, 1991, Mariana, Florida. Teresa Hall, 25, and five-year-old daughter Tiffany were both bludgeoned to death with a wooden table leg in their home. The killer had kicked on the front door and smashed a wooden table into pieces and used the legs as murder weapons. Um, Angel Maturino Resendez was suspected of the crime originally, but Sells confessed later um, to the double murder. Now this is, if we include Joanne and now this one, that's two murders that somebody else got the blame mm -hmm. for. That's insane. This next one was also was in Illinois. It's October 13th, 1997, Lawrenceville, Illinois. Ten-year-old Joel Kirkpatrick was stabbed to death in his bedroom while he was sleeping. His mother, Julie, ran to his room, encountered an intruder wearing a ski mask, and fought him off before he fled. The murder mm. weapon, a steak knife from their kitchen, mm. Mm -hmm, um, had been left, at the, um, left behind in the floor inside of uh, Joel's room. His mother was convicted of Joel's murder. Oh, that's awful. So that's number three. His what mother fuck? was convicted of Joel's murder. She was eventually exonerated in 2006. That's almost 10 years later when Sells confessed to the crime. He said that he targeted Joel because his mother insulted him at a nearby store. Mm. The only weird part that I found about the situation, because if you, like hear about the ones I just told you about. Like, nobody's left behind. Everybody dies. Like, he makes sure yeah, everybody he... in that house dies. So that's weird. So that's that... weird that the mother was not murdered. They ran into each other. She fought him a little bit. And then he ran away. So I, that's the only thing that I found weird about the situation. Because he didn't, like, even try to attempt to, like... Assault her. Nothing. nothing. No, they, they... Because I was saying, like, like, I was just thinking, like, he left Melissa, Melissa and Renee alive, but he didn't know he they didn't were know they Yeah, were he didn't know they were alive, so... Right. Wow. Whereas all these other ones that I've already talked about, like, everybody was dead. Like, he killed that one little boy who he thought the mother was stealing from him because he was mm -hmm. afraid of a, a witness. So the fact that he left the mom alive was weird to me. That really kind of, well, not only did she get left alive, she was in jail for 10 years, convicted of the murder of her son that she never did. So she had to sit with all that. So that's still just as much tor torture. Um, October 15th, 1997, Springfield, Missouri. So we're back mm -hmm. in Missouri, you guys. 13-year-old Stephanie Mahaney was found in a farm pond west of Springfield. Um... According to Sells, he pulled her from her bed at night, drove her to a field, injected her with cocaine, <gasps> raped her, and then strangled her to death. What is this is wrong with this? I mean, I know what, like, there's so many things wrong with it, but, like, why? 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 That's why I, I, uh... I just... Yeah. <laughs> like, you, like I said, like, going back to his childhood, like, you want to be like, okay, maybe that's why. But it's like, no, there's people who had shitty situations and they didn't turn out doing this bullshit. And it's all just so, like... Violent. Violent. And... So violent. And there's so many of them. They're all, like, clustered together. Yeah, we're not done, guys. Sorry. We're not done. Ugh. Yep. Uh, December 14th, 1997, Vegas. 19-year-old Yvette Sophia Mueller was last seen in the RV park. Um, Sells claims to have raped and killed a blonde-haired woman in the Vegas 
area, chopped her body up, and buried her next to the Snake River. But due to a landslide, her body was never found. And officials suspect Yvette is who they were referring to. So they're assuming that Yvette's death was him in mm. that story. Um, also, again, this was another one of those they weren't even going to bother trying because of funds. They didn't go and didn't bother that. with it. Um, April 15th, 1998, San Antonio, Texas. Thomas Brose, or Brose, who's 40, a carnival worker, who was shot to death in his motor home. He was last seen with a man matching Sells' description. Sells confessed, but later he recanted it. So, like I said, they thought that the, they thought when they arrested him for the final time that he was playing the system pretending mm-hmm. to confess to murders that he didn't do and they're thinking these are two of those gotcha murders that he didn't necessarily mm-hmm. do i think he liked to sound like that type of person who was like i did this yeah that was totally me because apparently you know murdering is cool these days in this man's eyes it's not cool guys don't murder <laughs> april 4th 1999 gibson tennessee Deborah Harris, 31, and her eight-year-old daughter, Ambria Halliburton, were both killed after Sells broke into their house at night. He raped Deborah in her bed. She was stabbed repeatedly with a kitchen knife from her kitchen, Mm -mm. which was left in her chest. He stabbed Ambria three times after witness after witnessing Sal's murdering her mother. So that's why, like, the Joel one still kind of confuses me as to why he left her alive. Yeah, it still doesn't make sense. That one doesn't make sense. Not saying he didn't do it. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. Because he doesn't seem to leave witnesses. Maybe something else happened that night that nobody knows, really. Right. Um, April 18th, 1999. San Antonio, Texas, nine-year-old Mary Beatrice Perez was kidnapped from a market festival, driven to a stockyard, raped and strangled to death with her t-shirt. Her body was found 10 days later. Uh, Sells was convicted of the murder. He sat for a little bit for that one. Not a very long time, though. Um... But he wasn't found, obviously, that quickly because May 13th, 1999, he was in Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky. Um, Haley McHone was 13, was kidnapped from a swing by cells, dragged into a wooden area and raped. She was strangled to death with her t-shirt and covered with debris. Her body was found 10 days later. Cells was arrested in the area in the area around that time for an unrelated crime. So he was currently being arrested for something different, but he killed both these girls the same way. Obviously, whatever he was arrested for in May did not last long. Yeah, he just kept getting out. Yeah, because in May 5th of 1999, Kingfisher, Oklahoma, Bobby Lynn Wolford, 14, was picked up from a Love's convenience store by Sells. I just want to say those Love convenience stores do creep me out. When we drive to Wisconsin to visit, mm-hmm. I see them, and I never feel comfortable going to them. I've never been in one. I mean, there's one going down south if you go through Disputanta and mm-hmm. you have to get that way. There's one down there, but I, I've never gone into it. I've never been I mean, there. they're just truck stops, so there's mainly truckers in there, mm-hmm. but... Truck stops at night freak me. They do freak me out a little bit. Um, also, loves convenience stores. Gas is very expensive. Did you see we're getting one of those... Bucky's? Yeah. Yes. I did see that. I did see that. I'd be I'm interesting. interested. Yeah. They have, they have jerky. Homemade jerky in there. Oh, I hope it's good. Um, Sal's drove her to a secluded area. He orally raped her. Meaning he forced her to... Mm-hmm. He sodomized her. That's what he did to Melissa, too. Yeah. Stabbed her repeatedly with a hatchet, then shot her in the head 
with a large caliber revolver when she tried to escape. So she was trying to get out, poor girl. He dumped her body off the side of the road and kept two of her earrings. Now, this is the only one that I found where he kept something of theirs. That's weird. Yeah. So, you wait, he said... Sh- yeah, blah, 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 blah. He attacked her with a hatchet? Yeah. That's weird, because it was found a um, hatchet under Joanne's bed. Remember? With a Hustler magazine. Oh, yeah. That was in 1982. This is 1999. Yeah. Doesn't mean he didn't hold on to things. Yeah. Maybe he did keep her hatchet. Because that's what the, those were two things that were like, okay, maybe she just left it under the bed for protection. Oh, no, no. Like it was, but it, it didn't actually, like it confused everybody. Why? They well, they found her hatchet later. That means he didn't keep her hatchet. But I'm just saying if he, if that's what he liked to use. I don't know. That's really this odd. is the only time that I've I've heard about a hatchet. The revolver I've heard about stabbing with kitchen knives. I've yeah, that's I've seen. definitely consistent. And also um, blunt items like a um, a bat, bat or stuff. like a wooden leg to a table. Now this is the one. This next one is the one that lands him. His fine. This is his final. No nose. December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. I know exactly where I was that day. Just want to say that. At my grandma's house, partying it up. <laughs> um, I was also definitely a little child. <laughs> I was <only> twelve. <laughs> I was twelve, so I was not partying that much. But I thought it was because I was like up late. Um, Del Rio, Texas. This story, on its own, Joanne Tate with the girls, Ooh. Melissa and Renee. Renee, yes. Mm-hmm. Kayleen, Katie Harris. So he knew these people personally, and these girls knew him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little bit more detail into this one. Um, these people knew him. He was friends with their parents, and, like, the kids knew who he was. Mm. Um, Katie Harris was 13. He broke into the home, had a knife on him. He cut... He put his hand over her mouth and cut her shorts and her underwear off and, like, tried to fondle her. And she eventually kicked away and got away, and she noticed... She started screaming, Mm -hmm. and she noticed she was bleeding. And she's like, oh my gosh, you cut me, you cut me! And she just starts screaming more and more. He eventually... So he sexually assaulted her. He stabbed her 16 times and slit her throat twice. Oh my gosh. So, naturally, she had died. Um, Crystal Searles, Searles, I don't think she knew who he was, but Katie Harris did. Um, She was in the room as well when the situation happened. And she told him, I won't scream. I won't fight. Please let me live. She was 10. Oh, my gosh. And he attacked her anyways. And slit her throat as well. But she survived. (gasps) Just like Melissa and Renee. Renee. She survived. And instead of trying to fight, she actually instantly played dead. Which, didn't Melissa do that? Yeah, Melissa played dead. Mm -hmm. Yes. And once she thought he was gone, she ran to a neighbor's house who was a quarter of a mile away for help. She had a severed trachea. Cells, oh my gosh. Cells was apprehended after being identified from a sketch made from the victim's description. Yeah. So, good on you, Crystal, because this case, which you had done fucked up in Texas, yeah, landed him the death penalty. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yep. Which is why he was not able to be convicted for the Dardeen family. Because he, as he was confessing, and like I said, he confessed to a number of crimes. Mm-hmm. And they re- definitely felt like he was, like, playing, you know, playing the system, trying to get them real confused. And like, well, maybe he didn't do this, or maybe he did do this. I don't know. Um, 
But the state's attorney of Jefferson County, Illinois, they declined to charge Sells for the Dardeen homicides because his confession was generally consistent. There were facts that were inaccurate with concerns to some of the details that were already made public. He also would change his account three times as to how he met the family. So I think he was playing around with them. I honestly think he was toying with them. Be like, yeah, I did that. And I met them this way. Or yeah, I did that. I met them that way. He was just a giant fucking douche. Like, uh, like even that's like not strong enough for it. I don't know. He's just like the worst human being. He's definitely one of them. Uh, definitely one of them. Investigators wanted to bring him to Southern Illinois to resolve the, their doubts. But Texas refused due to the law that it's forbidden to let death row prisoners leave the state. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, so. he could have tried to escape yeah. halfway through that, and then what? Yeah. Yep. Um, in 2000, this is the part that's really fucked up. So 19, what was that? 1990. Mine, you said? 1996 is when Joel Kirkpatrick was murdered and the uh -huh. mom went to jail for it. He confessed in 2004 that he killed Joel Kirkpatrick. His mom wasn't let out until 2007, 2006. So she was let out two years later after his Kinda confession. Kind of like the, the Rodney thing. Mm-hmm. And where did that one happen again? Was that one Missouri? Oh, uh, hold on, guys. Sorry, you gotta listen to my Or no, that on one was, probably, I think, Illinois, you said. That, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was an Illinois one as well. Sorry, that happened in 97, and she was let out in 2006. You got to listen to my wrestling on papers. Because I'm old school, and all my notes are on paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, January 3rd of 2014. 2014 is when his execution date was set for April 3rd of 2014. That's how, how long this guy was able to go around. Just doing things. Well, he wasn't uh, doing things. He was in prison still. Well, I would, I, yeah, he was in prison. He was. Like, I'm surprised, though, that he lived that long in prison. They must have kept him protected or something. They had to have. Um, so... Um, it was carried out at the Texas State Penitentiary, Penitentiary in Huntsville. And when he was asked if he had any final statements, he said, no. You know what was really great, though? I loved this, and it had me thinking a lot. It, it was also, like, what his final meal was. And they're like, in the notes it says, we don't give final meals. You just eat what everybody's eating. And I was like, yes. I love that. Yeah, because I don't think they should get a final Why meal. are we giving people on death row special meals? It's like, does it, is sorry, that, we're going to kill you, but here you go. Is that what it is? Is that is that what we're trying to do? Like, are we trying I to think be it's like, just a way to make themselves feel better about the whole situation. I mean, I couldn't imagine being that person. I totally couldn't. I, kudos to those who have that job. I couldn't do it. And, but there are a few people who I'm like, nope, that was deserved. This guy definitely deserved it. Mm -hmm. Def Absolutely. He definitely fucking deserved it. Um, Ted Bundy definitely deserved it because that dude escaped jail twice. Like, clearly yeah. <laughs> the only way we're going to stop this fucker is if we kill him. Yeah, you got to kill him. <laughs> like, he's just got to die. Um, But yeah, he's asking you any final statements. He's like, no. How, how nice of him. I know, right? Not a, I'm sorry or... I mean, not that it matters. He had, yeah. He not had that it matters. No empathy well, whatsoever. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second here. Um... He was then injected with a lethal injection, mm -hmm. took a few deep breaths, closed his eyes, began to snore. What an asshole. Oh, my God. That is, oh, my God. That's such a dick move. Yep. 13 minutes later, he was pronounced dead. Crystal, the, the girl, the 10-year-old girl that got this man caught, mm -hmm. finally pretty much ended his reign of terror. Members of both the Harris and the Perez family attended the execution. I couldn't. Like, I get it. Like, you wouldn't see him, like, fr like fry like you treated your, you know, family members. But I don't think I could sit there and watch yeah. somebody else die. His quote is, I am hatred. When you look at me, you look at hate. I don't know what love is. Two words I don't like to use are love. And sorry, because I am hate. 
Oh, that's that's actually really deep. Yeah. Oh yeah. My God. Yeah. Wow. So he eight years before his death, he was um he was featured uh, as an interviewee on an episode two, season one of Cold Blooded Killers. And that's where he had claimed to kill more than, like, 70 people. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to watch more about him, definitely go watch that. ABC News created a 10-minute mini-documentary of Tommy Lynn Sells, The Mind of a Psychopath. And then 2021 A&E Network's original show, I Survived a Serial Killer, um, made an episode about Fabian Witherspoon. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. F-A-B-I-E-N-N-E. And I was like, wait a second. When I was doing my research, mm -hmm. I did not see that case. So I had to go back and do some more looking in. Miss Witherspoon will say, I do not want to mutilate her first name. Mm -hmm. um, was a m crime he committed in May, on May 13th, 1992. She found Sal's begging on the street. Mm -hmm. She took him to her home where he proceeded to rape her. He then stabbed her 18 times and beat her with a piano stool. Oh, my God. She alerted police, and he was arrested and sentenced to a minimum of only two years in prison. What? And was released in 97. What? Two years for an attempted murder. What state was this? Which did you just say? I, you know, I didn't even see what state that was. Probably Missouri. Probably. <laughs> Probably Missouri. What the yes. So if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that one, definitely go watch the A&E Network's original show. I survived a serial killer. They did make an episode on her and her situation. So that was May of 92, right? So I remember I did make a comment about how, like, he was um, arrested about something... Sorry, I'm going back. For, like, um, another crime or something. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because he had a pretty big gap between December 9th, or December 9th, 1991, mm -hmm. and October 3rd, or October 13th, 1997. That is a big gap. That's him. a big gap. And that was in uh, Florida, was the Teresa Hall, and her daughter Tiffany, was 1991, this was done in 1992. That's why there's that gap. I just realized that, guys. Thank you for being here with me on that. <laughs> um, oh, there's also a book through the window, or some yeah through the window. Yes, there I is. I can't a book. remember the name of the author, but I do want to read that because she had kind of like a relationship with him, like through prison and whatnot. It kind of reminded me of Ted Bundy and what's her face that did that. I believe the stranger that. beside me. I believe it. I also found, and this is really crazy, <clears throat> fucking crazy, um, when I was looking up about that, because I, I noticed the two, 2021 story about Fabian Witherspoon, um, September 11th, 1988, <laughs> a day after I was born, Salem, New Hampshire, Melissa Tremblay was 11, and she was raped and stabbed, and then he got her ran over post-mortem by a train. He threw her dead body on train tracks and she was ran over post-mortem and she was found the next day. This, oh my God. Yeah. He so there was those two that I found later after doing a lot of my research and stuff. So I apologize guys that I'm a lot out of order to just to let you all know that drove me insane. But yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of his mo like it definitely matches up with the joanne tate it murder. matches a lot with joanne tate he did like a certain age group as you can tell as well mm -hmm. um he did target a certain age group he liked eight to a, I, mm -hmm. I think it was like in, a, in the 20s 30s a lot of single moms too a lot of single moms which you can obviously tell then had to do with a lot of hatred mm -hmm. and i could see even like the family dardine family um the man the, the father that picked him up and brought him home to help him was definitely a big target. There was not many men, but he, they, 
it was when I was reading a lot of these things could not be confirmed. He did a lot of assaulting in prison because he was in and out of jail. He was in Madison, Wisconsin and, and assaulted an inmate. The inmate was left unnamed. I thought that was kind of ironic. Um, he had a lot of, a lot of his crime list that I was reading. A lot of them were not confirmed. So I didn't feel like they were important to really go over. Most of these are the ones that were confirmed. The only one that to me that seemed very suspicious was Joel Kirkpatrick. Um, I don't know if the mom actually did it. I don't know if maybe somebody else did it. Cause I just, I found it really, really odd that she left that she was alive, that she was left alive because he didn't leave anybody else alive. Unless there's something that happened that night that we don't know about. Exactly. Which, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't look further into that, into that one either. Um, kudos, like I said, on that, the crystal girl in 99 for getting him busted. Yeah, what a smart girl. She did a great job. She's a badass, total Billy badass for playing dead for as long as she had to. Because, I mean, like you said, Melissa played dead and it didn't work. Because then he Melissa's comes back. Melissa's reached out to any of the. Like, if she's reached out to, like, her, per se. Right. She was a child. Mm -hmm. She was 10. Mm -mm -mm. Like, she's younger than me at that time. Yeah. I just got. Oh my god, he was something else. Mm hmm. Yeah, he, I'm glad he got the death penalty. Yeah. Well, he done fucked up in Texas, and they don't play. No, not at all. They're not mm -hmm. afraid to use their death penalty. And meanwhile, only getting two years. Yeah. For killing the other one. Yeah. That's ridiculous. For an attempted murder. I mean, two years is just not long enough. No way. But yeah, guys, that's, that's Tommy. Will not give him his, his title he wants. No, definitely that not. That is Tommy Lynn. Lynn. Rotting in hell. Thank goodness. I don't even think he's there. I don't think he deserves to even be there. That's a whole other topic that we can go on. <laughs> of what my ideas of what heaven and hell are. Well, if it was like your Bible version of hell, he deserves to be there. Fair An enough. internal agony. Fair enough. That's, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, so yeah. What do you guys think of that? I could definitely see why. And I will I will put up pictures because Melissa definitely was said that, you know, it was a man with black hair to his ears. I guess he had black hair to his ears at that mm -hmm. time. He did. And he, she said she remembered those eyes and the, his eyes when you look at him he's like he looks dead like, like it's, he's it's, got nothing there yeah there's nothing behind his eyes so it's wouldn't surprise me that a child that would stand out to her mm -hmm. like because he does he looks different mm -hmm. in his eyes he does he he really does there's like no life at all mm -mm. Mm -hmm. wow fucked up fucked up well thank goodness our next episode will be a little bit of a, of a kind of a break. Yeah, I'm because a... that's a lot of brutal. What is our next episode gonna be about? Oh, it's gonna be about Wisconsin. It's gonna be a doozy, guys. Have come come to that one. That's gonna be fun. I think it's more of a, less gonna be more like a debate between the two of us. A debate in your own little conspiracy theory. <laughs> come for our for this conspiracy, guys. Buckle up. I would love some feedback on that one later. Oh, okay, trust me, they're all gonna be like, "Yeah, there's something fucking wrong with Wisconsin." <laughs> We're done here. Until next time, guys. What are we gonna do next? Get toasted. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.